Hey everyone, DuckNuck84 here, back with another game. This time we are going to be playing Cyberpunk Bartending Action Valhalla, which is a combination between a visual novel and a bartending game. Um, I saw the game on uh, Steam during the su just you know the recent summer sale, and it really kind of intrigued me, so I picked it up and uh, wanted to try it out. And I wanted to do some visual novels before, but kind of held off on it just because. One, you know, there's a lot of reading, and two, I'm probably not the best at giving people voices, so I figured I, you know, didn't know how I'd want to do a visual novel. But, like I said, this game really intrigued me, so I wanted to play it. So let's go ahead and get started. And this, of course, is going to be pretty much blind. I did a test recording of about five minutes just to make sure the game worked, but that's all I know. So let's get started. Thank you for playing Valhalla. This game is best played getting comfortable. Grab some drinks, some snacks, and enjoy. Sit back and relax, and we hope you have a good time. Well, hopefully you who are watching that go and do that, so let's get in this. Psst. Hey, over here. Boo! Now we got no signal there. How's that for an entrance? Come on, Joe. Look sharp. The game's starting and the player needs a good first impression of the main character. I know you served a bunch of tuxedo-clad corgis over the weekend and the bar will eventually close. And I'll admit my little prank on you might have gone a bit overboard. But remember, life is 90% how you take it. Stay focused and look at the bright side of things. I have no idea what the bright side is, but you should totally find it. In any case, you should totally check that parcel you just got. See ya! Oh, yeah. Just a dream. Hmm? There's something near the door. Chapter 1 Primera. Your membership to The Shining Fingered will automatically renew on the 17th. Make sure your account has at least $800 by then. Make sure you save your data using the Live Backup app. You can now browse the Augmented Eye. Okay. Foray. So who was that letter from? Nobody. I guess Foray is the name. Maybe that's my cat. Is that are you Foray? Okay, well, let's go here. A little phone app. What do we got? An augmented eye. Mass immigration continues as Wonderlanders are a new threat, and Cyborgs and Heels continues next year. Great. We got our juke box, we can change that around if we want, and life backup, which is our save and load. So we will do that. Okay, well, I think that's all we can do. We got zero money in our account, we need to have 800 by, I think it said the 17th, so we, I guess, can stay in our apartment. So, let's start making that money. Good evening. Ah, hey there, Jill. Uh, hey, John. When will you admit you have a John face, Gil? When you let people call you Julie or Jules. Quiet. Are you okay? You look distracted. Where's the boss? Don't know. She went out to buy some stuff and... Did you hear what I just told you? You said something? Yes. That you look distracted. Very, very distracted. It's nothing. I'm just thinking about... Stuff. What stuff? Well, I have to pay rent by the 30th, which is always stressful, and... Uh, 
There's also the fact that I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to myself. No, there's you are again. But apparently, I guess maybe only I can see you. Not to mention the fact that two days ago I found out the bar is at risk of closing. So not only is my life being shaken up, I'm apparently going crazy. On top of that, nah. Neutering Foray left uh, me with completely empty wallet, and I'll get evicted if I miss rent again. Okay, so Foray is my cat. And there's always the beer cans around my apartment, and... Jill! Sorry, did you say something? Can you really work today? Of course I can. Let's go through the basics, then, shall we? Just in case. If you can make a piano man, I'll skip the rest, but bear with me for a second here, okay? Let's start with a sugar rush. Look for the recipe using the navigation bar in the recipe book that will show up on the top left. You can also sort drinks by flavor like sweet or types like manly. Drag the desired amount of ingredients from their cells in the right to the shaker in the center. Gill. When done, press the mix button and then press it again to stop mixing. Click the serve button or the drink itself to serve it and it will be all. That will be all. Oh, but if the drink looks messed up, you'll need to press the reset button and try again. You can press reset at any time, even while sh the shaker is moving. Don't be afraid to use it. Gill. I'm the one who went through the formal BTC instruction. Then this should be no problem. <sighs> so we gotta make him either a sugar rush or a piano man. So go buy that and let's go sugar rush. Sugar rush, two Adeline, one powdered delta with optional karma train, all mixed. Sweet, light, and fruity, as girly as it gets. Okay, so we go here, here, powdered. Delta and optional that. Mix and done. Here's one sugar rush coming up. Here, happy now? A little, but not quite. Let's do one more. Uh, I know, I know. Please humor me for a bit. Some drinks need to be blended. This is done by mixing it for over five seconds. You can tell it's being blended when the shaker starts moving faster. You also need to check if the drink should be served on the rocks or aged. Check ice and age button on the side to select the one you need. And in case it wasn't obvious, on the rocks means you have to toggle the ice tab. It should be noted that the station will add the ice after mixing. It's not something you should mind though, just a fun fact. Give me a moonbeam and I'll leave you alone. Keep in mind what I said. Yeah, yeah. So we gotta give you a moonbeam. Six Adeline, one powdered delta, one flanger, that's that. Two counting, all on the rocks and blended. Okay, so that's that. In relation to the... Hadrian Cannon, you should see on the moon for one week every month. Okay, so we need one, two, three, four, five, and six. One of those, one of those, and mix. And it's okay, so that's when it's blended. There we go. One moonbeam. Here. Did I amuse you for long enough? You did. Sorry to hold you. Let's get working. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before I forget. Hmm. You can make any drink big by doubling the amount of ingredients. But if the recipe already has over 10 ingredients, the drink is already big. Oh, and if a recipe says it uses optional carmatrine, it means you can use none or fill it to the brim. 
optional Carmatrine doesn't count towards making a big drink, of course. Carmatrine is the alcoholic factor in the drink. It doesn't ta uh, change the taste, but the amount still has an effect. If you add too much of it, the client will get drunk faster, so please be mindful. Are you, going, are you done with the explanations? No, I am. Yeah. Hey, guys. Oh, boss. Eh? Who's that? I don't know. Found her while I was out shopping. Why bring her here? Well, it e was either leave her outside at the mercy of society's finest, or bring her unconscious body in here. He's going to make such a ruckus when she wakes up, you know. That's up for you to deal with. I'll be in my office. Thanks, boss. Can't just push that responsibility onto us. We have work to do, damn it. There are two of you. Believe in yourself. Uh, do you think the chief knocked her out? Nah, that's unlikely. She's been uh, crowing about it or taunting us if that were the case. And it's not like her to pick on such a small girl. At least not unprovoked. Yeah, you're right. We'll just need to keep it quiet. She seems to be just sleeping soundly, not comatose. Yeah. Okay, then. Time to start the night. Yes, let's start working while you go clean the bathrooms. Uh, come again? While well, you spent the whole weekend on... Monday doing God knows what. We've had some interesting clientele coming. Yes, apparently tuxedoed corgis. Dogs. Lots of them. You're joking. Gil, you've known me for a long... How long now? Do I look like the kind of woman who would make a joke like that? Well... So, as punishment for leaving me to deal with all of them on my lonesome, you'll be in charge of cleaning the bathroom. Have fun! Just that. Fine. I see no problems. Where's the cleaning stuff? Here you go. You brought that from home, didn't you? That I did. Fine. With that out of the way, let's play some music on the jukebox. This model needs to have all of its 12 slots filled with songs before I can start. I wonder what was the logic behind that decision. Okay, add a song by clicking on the tile on the left. You can remove them by clicking on. I'll swap song by. Swap two songs by clicking on them. Okay, so, um. Put that in there. We'll put that. We'll just go down the list for now. There we go. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey you, get me a beer. Oh, sure, right on it. He wants a beer, he looks like quite a big guy though. Oh, so we just want beer. One Adeline, two bruising extracts. Two of those and one, two, three, for traditionally brewed beer has become a luxury, but this one's pretty close to the real deal. So it's basically a synth beer. Here's your synth beer, sir. Here you go. No, no, this isn't going to cut it. Give me a big one. Um, sure. So we said with making beer, it was... Or making it big, we had to double the ingredients. So we know... Oh my God, how many ingredients do we have? Two, four, five, or eight, so we uh, yeah, can't count. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So wait, I mean, anything over that would be already considered big. Um, okay, let's try that. One, two. I don't know if this is going to work. And one, two, three, four. Oh, wait, but didn't you say that the 
the karma train doesn't count towards the total amount of ingredients or something like that. Well, let's get him super drunk then. <laughs> Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, do that nine. Okay, yeah, so that's the mixer thing. And that maybe? Nope, that's not going to do it. So we've got two. Two of those, so we need four of those. I think that's why I messed up there. Two. Four, and one, two, three, four. Okay, what am I not... I'm missing something here. Traditional beer, done that, he wants it big. Two ingredients. It's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Try that. Okay, so we have... Maybe I just need to serve him another beer. And now? I said a big one. Brat, big! Like my dick. Forget it, these two will have to do. Well, yeah, because I couldn't make a big one. You're lucky I was in a meeting close by. This hellhole could certainly use a person like mine. Although, to be fair, work has taken me to the worst hellholes, like New Jersey 3. Huh? What kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson, chief editor and owner of the Augmented Eye. Nothing gets published there without my blessings. The day starts with quite an interesting fellow, it seems. So you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles and Alice Rabbits then, or on Alice Rabbits then. Hey, people love those articles. They love reading about the urban legend. Can you blame them? The idea of some wild card hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's? That's the kind of corny shit that brings the clicks from all kinds of people. And clicks bring money, and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars and houses, and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. Well, I'm not complaining about the fact you write about the hacker, just that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculation or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. Well, first of all, I don't write about it. My interns do. The poor bastard thinks it'll help them make a full, them full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of one article about a sup uh, supposed hacker. But not all the daily stories are about murder and other horrors. Well, I always filtered out that section. I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as is. I don't need to add Glitch City's lovely citizens to that list. You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were like you, I'd go bankrupt from lack of traffic. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get distance, uh, dis People get bored of a certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. When I started in this job, it only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now you need an elderly woman carrying a sack of baby boy, uh, a sack baby boy getting hit by a truck. 
carrying a sack of, I'm guessing, sack of baby boys getting, or, or, no, can't read, a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. That's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. They're easier to write about and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot and even people like you, people who avoid the murder stories, will see them. That brings money, and like I said, money's good. Huh? Guess he has a point. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those good sources of traffic too? Oh, I hate those brats. They just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone that likes a certain something should be sodomized. The worst part about this is they know half of our clicks come from them, so they get all the diva-like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. What about... No, wait. I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, columnists on your page are annoying. See? The kid on the restaurant critique column. Um, uh, shit. Forgot that brat's name. Restaurant? I believe that's... That kid couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, his column is the least visited of the bunch. He gets less hits than the obituaries. However, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't even any, have any problems with that if he actually wrote about half of the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming that he's a food critic. Poor bastard only gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some guy coming here asking for free drinks and saying he was a critic or whatever. Do you look like a fat child with a really small face? No? Wasn't this one then. Anyway, all this talk made me thirsty. Try giving me a beer this time, please. Coming right up. Beer again. This man likes his beers. They come cheap in bulk at the store, though. Okay. So I'm guessing he just wants a regular beer, then. One beer. Yeah, this is a beer, all right. Keep it up, kid. It'll get better someday. Thanks? So tell me, do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. If the place smells like soap and dog piss, I'm pr with uh, my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. I'm doing my best here, thank you very much. Who's that? Nobody important. Hey, I heard that. Don't be offended by what I say, kid. I'm insulting the building, not you. You can think of it as a small hell, a small hole in hell rather than a hellish hole if you like. Charming. So, celebrities. Not really, at least not that I know of why. Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me a feel special, honey. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people. Especially the red carpet kind of famous. Those folks people pretend to love but actually want to see fall from grace. Pretend to love? Fall from grace? Why do you think this gossip about famous people always sells? People pretend that they love celebs, but... What they really want to see is their idols torn down to their level. They want to see them suffer to get their comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. Nah, I think the gossip is just something everyone enjoys but no one wants to admit enjoying. You thought wrong, but even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living someone else's. Sadly, I fail to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals or if they're dating God knows who? Granted, socks with sandals is particularly a public indecency, but still. Oh please, as a bartender I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. 
The kind always loves to hear that stuff. Just like the hairdressers. This sounds hypocritical coming from you. Eh, even if it that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than the person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize, eh, sensationalizing is the key word here. Just the other day I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing at the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this probably exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exact locations, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury you can think of. All that just leaves the public craving for something, you know, for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but... Sometimes the crowd just wants to see their human. Hey, the dude that plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. To be fair, the gossip attracts, you know, articles don't help sensationalize in everything. Feels like they're insisting on a behavior that shouldn't even be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, brat? I can say I don't because I stumble over those words. Well, you can play the game of... Hmm. Hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat, hell-bent on world conquest. Just call me the brain. Sarcasm's wasted on my... Wastes my time, my money, and my energy. Refrain from using it. Anyway, I just realized that a bartender like you must hear quite a few stories in her career. Talks about changing topics. Maybe. Why? Would you like a column talking about those? I bet they would sell quite well. It wouldn't be like the priest who published confessionary stories and then got excommunicated and lynched. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender. A personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwrite half of our staff to do the rest. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. Anyway, eventually the people from the stories would know it's, uh, it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah. Like you'll remember me two weeks from now. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Er, Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Did I say something wrong? Not at all. Just like the sound of it. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson. Or boss. Boss is just a tile. It's too impartial and cold. Is it? Mr. Dawson was my father and grandfather. It's too gentle, but Mr. Donovan? Now, that's more like it. They're referring to me, to the man in front of them, not to my family, not to my position as boss, to me! You want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? Oh, gods, no. But I want them to fear me, not because I'm their boss or the name appearing in their paychecks, but rather because I'm, you know, I strike mortal dread into them. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to make everyone call me that. Oh yeah, you were asking something, what was it? Drink. Another? Do you? Ah oh, yes, yes. You know what? Third time's the charm. Give me a beer. Alright. Well, I'm actually going to pause this right here. So I think we've gone on long enough, but I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, if you did, leave a comment, you know, a favorite or a like, and I will see you next time. Until then. <laughs>